to introduce myself, hi everyone who is uh, is joining us today and welcome back. I uh, hope everyone had a nice little intermission there and has been enjoying the day thus far. My name is Alex Novadniex and I work with VistaView. We are an SAP partner and consultancy based in Canada, um, but operating all over the continent uh, across North America. And I myself, uh, whilst I definitely don't sound Canadian, I'm working on it. And I am, uh, I'm a British citizen, but living out here in, uh, in Vancouver, actually, for the last nine years now. So today, I'm going to dive straight in here. Um, and, you know, we'll do a little level set as well. We're going to go through the financial foundation and why it makes sense as a growing company, as a startup, as a young organization, to, to, to skip straight to ERP, as opposed to the perhaps um, more tried and tested method amongst smaller organizations to patchwork many systems together, or perhaps rely on more, um, I would say, more basic accounting tools. With that in mind, you know, let's, let's start with the level set by defining ERP versus accounting software. You know, really, ERP is like the employee or team member that never takes a sick day, never takes a vacation, and works everywhere across the business. You know, enterprise resource planning, or ERP, is at its core a financial and operational system of record, unified data, unified operations. On the other side, with accounting software, as you can see here on the screen, it's much more and typically a transactional system of record. So in, in these types of tools, you're, you're not really conducting, say, complex warehousing operations, materials purchasing, or tracking the full quote to cash process as it flows across the business. It can be great for an early stage organization that is still defining the go to market, but it's not sustainable in the long run as you grow. You know, when, when you grow as a business and you have many different tools in place, this can represent uh, both tangible and intangible risk factors to the organization. It's not necessarily a, a scalable and replicable process or, or methodology to, to operating the business where you have multiple people across multiple locations, perhaps, using multiple tools and having to develop their own nuanced workarounds in order to get the job done. And those nuanced workarounds are the real tricky part, the, the irreplaceably, sort of ir irreplicably uh, difficult parts of that growing teething pain. Now, with regards to VistaView, you know, just a quick high level on what we do. You know, our purpose at the very core is to provide innovative business management solutions that help our customers run great. Operationally, as, as an organization as well, we center most of our decision making around the feedback from the customer. Whilst, you know, Conducting projects, winning clients is a, is a vital part to, to what we do and continuing to scale the business. There is no future for an organization like VistaView without taking wholeheartedly the feedback of the customer. So with that in mind, you know, our, our vision is, is really at, at the high level to become the most respected mid-market systems integrator by both reputation and client base. We aim to continuously innovate solutions that enable customers to run great. On top of that, to build a proud employee-owned company. So even I myself, being a part of the VistaView team here, I'm a part owner in the business, and everyone is. And this gives us a greater sense of connection to the purpose, to the vision, to the outcome from each person's work as it flows along the line. On top of that, you know, we want to be the best and most caring place to work. Ultimately, the human element, whether it's ERP, manufacturing, sneakers, or, you know, perhaps um, conducting third-party logistics for online Amazon sellers, it does not matter which industry you operate within. If you operate a, a caring place to work where you identify the needs of your people, whether it be in systems or simply in their day-to-day -day life, it helps people do better work. It helps them run great. And by association, helps the business run great as well. And last but not least, to be a charitable leader in the communities that we and our customers live and work in. Now, I'm going to quickly skip through here as well. Just again, high level overview of, of how we went through our own growth trajectory, where we are today versus where we started. You know, back in 2003, when the business was founded, we joined as, a, as an SAP Business One partner. 
Now, SAP Business One is the small to medium um, business uh, ERP solution. So anywhere from, from one all the way up to, say, 500 users can, can operate safely within the Business One platform. And I myself, you know, I've, I've operated in the Business One space now for, gosh, um, almost eight years. And the SAP world, it by by large as well, for for the same amount of time, you know, working on projects both large and small, I've identified through through the course of my work thus far that ultimately, at the very thin of it, a lot of customers' problems or challenges that they face, regardless of size or industry, there are reciprocities between these, and they can be identified. And you know, working with a partner or consultancy like us is where we we come into the fold to help identify those challenges and pick from our sort of volume of knowledge across the organization in terms of how we can bring best practices to an ERP project. You know, skipping forward to the future a little bit here, you know, we we introduced FieldView. It's a, a, a field service management solution. It became SAP Partner of the Year in Canada. We expanded over to the US. Back in 2016, we became that employee-owned company that we are today. And then through acquisitions from 2017 all the way through till the uh, the present day, uh, we've then scaled up the, the business to adopt, say, larger mid-market segment offerings, such as uh, business by design from SAP. And then last but not least, of course, S4, the flagship ERP product from SAP as well. So we're able to cover both ends of the trajectory from start to finish, one employee all the way up to 100,000. And that's really, you know, that's the sweet spot of, of operating in our space is being able to stay connected with that customer and be a part of that journey. So now, by way of agenda, you know, now that we've got the intros and uh, and sort of Vista View high level summary uh, completed, you know, we're going to dive straight in. You know, why act now? The benefits of action and and the uh, the costs of inaction. Kind of an overview of the ERP market some high level tips and tricks in terms of the the looking and evaluative process and the decision making process and then you know we'll we'll close things off and, and send you all on uh, on your way to uh, to enjoy the rest of the day so first why not wait first and foremost on these points i want to lean into the topic of reactive decision making i've witnessed firsthand the differences erp can make for a company in the early stages of growth on decision making. In most cases, you know, an, an early stage company or a growing organization is going to have many people wearing many hats, operating between the lines of, of typical roles to keep headcount low for as long as possible until the time comes for further growth or further new hires. And this leans back to sort of the idea we were talking about earlier in, in the human element, putting better systems in front of folks to, to mitigate the nuanced workarounds. Because when an organization operates like this, but doesn't use centralized systems with dynamic reporting capabilities, it massively inhibits the ability to make those proactive decisions before hitting the bumps in the road ahead. A prime example would actually be a, a, a mixed cocktails company that I was, I was working with. They, they were evaluating their first ERP, migrating off of an accounting tool, QuickBooks, and they were not able to proactively forecast their demand across multiple seasons, and then were regularly hitting production roadblocks and downstream fulfillment issues due to the lack of visibility of when they needed to purchase raw materials. Now, when they were then able to standardize this process, lay it out in a clear workflow, blueprint it out, and then implement an ERP, they were then able to build up accumulated historical sales data, as well as their booked future sales, to map the scenarios for better purchasing and move forward with ultimately one less thing to work about, uh, to worry about, sorry. You know, when you've got these types of fulfillment issues or, or purchasing uh, 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 challenges that, that you face, this ultimately takes time from someone who has great value to the organization. And when you take that time, it's not always easy to measure how much time is lost to work around these types of challenges and fix things. So having a, a replicable, scalable process in place will support that, that cocktails organization in terms of how they then grow incrementally year over year without needing to worry about sort of your, your basic rigor mortis process in the background. Secondly, as well, to build from that last point is, is the human cost. You know, 
in most businesses, the greatest cost center is, is typically payroll. Sometimes R&D, but most of the time payroll. And for startups, some of this can be mitigated, again, by folks wearing those many hats and operating between lines of business. But with that being said, in order to navigate these roles in those early stages, you know, they, they then create those nuanced workarounds for processes to flow or for data to be uh, replicated uh, to then pass through the chain of completion. Whilst that works to an extent, there is that definitive ceiling at which the amount of time lost in productivity due to this is, is met and, and then sadly hard to place that real tangible value on. And last but not least, you know, as the business grows, it becomes increasingly difficult to scale as those workarounds and, and data input efforts are harder to train during the onboarding of, of new hires. Moving on in terms of the benefits that then accrue to those that act. Ultimately, you know, there, there are benefits showing on, on the screen here, but really at its very core, the short and thin of it, as an organization, if you're a CEO, a COO, a CFO, even director, VP level, you could be the controller, whatever it may be, whichever line of business. You want to know that the organization is going to operate with consistency the same way, whether you are there or not. That way, you can have the assurance that, yes, operationally, financially, reporting-wise, process-wise, everything is flowing as it should, which ultimately then has the knock-on effect of delivering greater consistency to your end customer. You know, when you think again as well about the, the future state of benefits that accrue to those that act, artificial intelligence in terms of the consolidation, the cleanliness, the categorization and, and molding uh, and, and ultimately reporting and decision making ability from the data in your ERP is a huge talking point in uh, the systems world as it sits today. In in our space, as, as an example with, with SAP, I was just at, a, uh, at a, a partner summit to look over some of the, the new roadmap uh, developments and, and new pieces of IP within the ecosystem that we operate within. There was a, an organization that had created a, an AI plugin, actually started working with the large enterprise group uh, of, of airlines in the US through Deloitte. Um, and they had done so because the FAA had blocked them from rehiring as many people as they had let go during the initial stages of COVID, when all of them were hit in terms of cash flow and, and the inability for customers and consumers to travel. Now, that ultimately left them with the challenge of needing to do more with less. But as consumers as well, you know, moving through the, the COVID age and then coming through out of that into where we are today, there is a greater expectation that we as consumers bring now into the professional workspace. The, the, the blending of our expectations of, of what good looks like from systems and user experience is now becoming a very prevalent part of, of our daily working lives. And this AI tool addresses that directly uh, with regards to say, a more conversational method of interacting with the ERP itself say you're a field sales guy and you're out there you're with a customer and you want to maintain the ability to have a good quality conversation with the customer, but you also want to check on inventory items, push that through to a quote and then all the way through to the fulfillment stage, you can do so on your mobile device now as if you were having a text conversation on iMessage with one of your friends. And all of that goes to say benefits in terms of those that act is without adopting an ERP in the early stages, you fail to do what is best by the people working within the organization, whereby they are able to do more with less and able to do so with greater fluency and then ultimately greater consistency for the customer. Outside of the, uh, the AI topic, of course, you know, day sales outstanding. That is at its core as well, typically attributed to a lack of clear process or systems within the accounting line of business. It can also be accounted uh, to largely manual processes whereby finance teams don't have the holistic view of total payments due. This is really a critical point for companies to rectify, given that it directly impacts the cash flow and the cash position of the business. So a high DSO is, is usually a sign as well that your customers don't necessarily value the services or products that you're 
that you're bringing to market and are able to abuse the systems in place due to the poor process behind the scenes. So bringing that real ERP into the equation reduces that and, and ultimately improves your cash position, cash flow position as an organization as you go forward day by day by pointing all operational and financial activities through a single system of record. It then provides the accounting team with automated methods in which to collect on overdue payments. On-time deliveries as, as another one as well. You know, in, in today's day and age, we, we learned from Domino's in the very early stages of what it means to keep our eyes on the prize like a hawk watching from the order preparation all the way through to delivery. You know, on-time deliveries are a massive win or lose point for businesses in today's day and age. If you fail on the expectations set to the customer on when your product will be in their hands, it leaves an indelible poor taste, bitter taste in their mouth. And these can be caused, you know, ranging from supply chain delays, warehouse inefficiencies, inventory inaccuracies, or simply the, the lack of available to promise from, from a sales team perspective, which again, ultimately can all be resolved through the utilization of a true ERP system, because you're keeping everything, whether it's warehouse, inventory, finance, sales, everything is operating under one roof. And it's really critical to building the business and growing a business in today's economy, because without this, you struggle to build the same sticky relationship with the customer. And we, we have to follow through on those expectations that we're setting. Another piece of the puzzle here, you know, order accuracy, inventory management and proper warehouse processes in the back end, the flow of documentation from sales all the way through to shipping. When processes are covered manually or through Excel sheets, the chain that an order flows through is, is, is open, far too, open to far too many potential breakage points. And when it comes down to having, say, non-communicative systems in place, it typically then relates to data then having to be replicated across that flow of an order and then being keyed maybe incorrectly by a human at some stage. Unifying this in that single system reduces the, the points of failure. It also reduces the amount of human time spent pulling that order through the chain and instead allows systems to push to each stage, leaving your people to focus on more pertinent tasks. Please forgive me, I have, to, I have to blow my nose as I've got terrible allergies. <laughs> now, on, on inventory accuracy as well, again, on the warehouse management side, I've seen this in pretty much every single customer project where a business is growing and managing inventory within their Excel sheets or other off offline tools. You know, when you're growing a business, you don't want to worry about whether you have the product available to sell at the point of securing the sale. Having everything visible within an inventory module or a warehouse management system is, is genuinely the, the easiest way around this. And again, it's about making promises you can keep to the customer and putting the product in the hands of the customer with the fewest points of operational and experiential friction possible. Last but not least as well, you know, when you when you're looking at faster, accurate financial reporting, if you don't have a true ERP system, then it's very unlikely that you'll have access to true, proactive, real-time reporting within the organization. Unless you are, you know, lucky enough to be in the possession of the rare breed of organizational Excel whiz kids that are in dwindling supply nowadays, it, it can be useful to have said geniuses on hand with or without an ERP system. But ultimately, that you know, an ERP system is at its core, again, it, it's a financial system of record. SAP actually created uh, the, the, the enterprise resource planning systems way back. I believe this was in the, uh, the early 70s. Um, and really, it was, it was simply uh, an accounting and a financial tool at the, at the start and has then ballooned and blossomed into encompassing every line of business. Now, in terms of actually, sorry, one last point, the, the customer satisfaction. You know, all of these points tied together when we're talking about consistency, on-time deliveries, reducing your day's sales outstanding, um, having the, 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 the customer satisfaction piece at the very core to what you do, similar to what we do, you know, it's, it's, it's really down to having better systems in place. Good systems and fewer clicks per person as something internally moves along the chain equals better work, better response times from your people, which then equals better operational performance and by association equals a better customer experience. Whether you are delivering services, selling products, or a bit of both, 
And ERP allows you that flexibility and forward visibility on the business as it sits today and tomorrow to focus on those revenue generating tasks while removing some of the more menial click focused activities from the day. I'm just going to quickly check the chat here. No, no questions at present. Um, now, in terms of signs that you may already be overdue, now this is not a one size fits all. Um, and ultimately as well, for, for many folks, you may not experience any of, the, any of these, but still find value in adopting an ERP. You may experience all of them, but still decide, no, it's, it's not the right time for us as an organization. But if you're importing, ex exporting macros through Excel and not doing so through, say, live sheets directly connected to the database backend on your ERP, that represents uh, reactive as opposed to proactive reporting and decision making uh, processes in place. If you're using multiple tools and systems to do one job, we've all been there. I've had so many roles and, and um, say, uh, gigs, I would say, along the line where I've had to use a number of systems and replicate my efforts as I flow through the chain of, of say, a, a, a quote all the way through to the cash process. Doing so, having multiple systems and having to replicate data myself, if you have a busy day, well, you might make mistakes. And that's where unifying everything under one under one roof mitigates some of those some of those risk points, those choke points, and ultimately gives someone like myself or like yourselves the ability to simply focus on the task at hand. Now, you know, this is more of a generalized one, an ever-growing to-do list. Well, we all have ever-growing to-do lists in today's day and age, sadly. But if you find yourself in the position where you are experiencing multiple of these points on top of an ever-growing to-do list, then yes, most assuredly, you are probably reaching that point as a business whereby you are hitting that ceiling and you may find it valuable to start looking outwards to how you can better unify your systems landscape. Again, as well, you know, when you have everything operate under one roof, one of the benefits that you have is the ability to delegate and triage tasks, processes, the needs and wants of the business, whether it's now or in the future, and you're able to see that and a change log as it flows through the organization. When you have multiple systems in place, or perhaps none, the uncertainty of, you know, maybe who changed this? Oh, we don't know. Who updated the inventory sheets? Well, we don't know. You know, who last touched this piece of work? Who is in charge of this piece of work or this project? That's a real risk and ultimately time lost when you're having to ask questions such as these, uh, whereby if you have a, an ERP or a, a true operational system of record in place, you can simply from the same screen that you're working within see who is in charge and pull up the change logs to see what changes have been made or, or perhaps reference previous versions. Another piece of the puzzle as well, you know, when you've got growing sales, but stagnant gross profit, this is a really important one to lie, uh, to sort of lean in on. Because when you have growing sales, but stagnant profits, that can be a sign that the human cost, the workarounds are having an impact on the business. It's great to know you're growing sales. That means you've got a product that works, you've got a service that resonates. But if your profit is stagnant, then ultimately, operationally, you are eating into any of those growing sales that, that, you, that you could be reaping the margins from. And, you know... With all of this in mind, process creep, human productivity, cost losses, you know, when you've got the growing sales, but stagnant gross profit, that is genuinely indicative of the process creep, human productivity, cost losses. Um, and actually, in the interest of time, we're going to skip forward here, a quick, high level um, ERP market terminology. At the very top of your pyramid here, in terms of your tier one ERPs, there's your flagship SAP S4 HANA, you know, Oracle Cloud. These are your large enterprise, um, sort of half a million to upwards millions of, of annual cost and, and works really from your 5,000 plus all the way, really, uh, irrespective of the number of employees that you have, it can operate as such. Your Nikes, your Lululemons, uh, your Under Armors and your Sephoras. In the tier two space, that's where you have SAP's S4 Public Cloud. Now, this leans uh, into um, essentially... Um, a, a, a preset group of best practices that a consultancy like us could then lean on to um, mitigate some of the blueprinting roadblocks that you might have crossing all of the channels and lines of business within a really large 
organization that would need S4 HANA private. Um, you've also got FNO from Microsoft. The, the cost jumps down significantly, and, and generally you're looking in this 100 to 5,000 employee range. But really, again, you know, these tiers are not uh, one size fits all. They are not the recipe for what good looks like, which system should work for you. Within this space, I've seen organizations of fewer than 50 using a tier two ERP because the revenue and the complexity of the business and the scaling potential of the business necessitates it. On top of that, though, you know, I've also seen tier three ERPs in the business one or, or business central space operating with well over a thousand employees. And then when you have your accounting software, this is really the, the one area within this pyramid that actually has uh, weight to it in terms of a definable recipe. If you reach more than 50 employees and you are relying on an accounting software as your primary source of truth, then it's most likely time to start looking outwards. And how do you do that? How do you look for an ERP? It's, you know, they're everywhere online. You're probably gonna be targeted after um, your phones and, and computers have picked up me talking about this for the last 30 minutes. Um, so my apologies, but if you're in the market, then great. You're going to get all of what the market has to offer you uh, through all of your social media platforms. But, you know, first and foremost, as a business, you want to start looking inwards. What are the internal needs? What are the challenges that we face? What do we want? What does good look like versus bad? What does the current state versus desired state look like? And when I say desired state, I'm not just thinking fix the problems of today. Really, when you when you move into an ERP system, you're doing so with the understanding that you should be on this same system of record for three, five, 10, potentially even 15 years going forward. And so you want to think about the opportunities that you could have as a business, the, the projects that you would like to undertake, but perhaps with the challenges you face today in mind, do not have the bandwidth or perhaps the, the revenue backing to be able to do so. And with that in mind, then you can take that into your project and you have to pick the right partner. I cannot stress this enough. And I, I like to use stories a lot in terms of when we're operating through evaluative processes with customers, because I feel that it, it simply resonates better. I like to think of an ERP, not just as a, an employee that never takes a sick day, but it's an ERP project is much like a heart transplant for a business. You know, your limbs, your hands, your head, your feet, your legs, your organs are all different lines of business. And the data flowing through that is the capillaries, the arteries, the veins, the blood flow is dependent on the integrity of that data so that it can keep the heart healthy and keep all of the limbs in check. And if you go through an ERP migration project and you pick the wrong partner or the wrong surgeon, there's a, a good chance that you'll end up back on the surgeon's table six months from now um, or back in the ERP evaluative process six months later, having not landed where you thought you could. Once you pick the right partner, someone with the curiosity and the resonance with where you're looking to go as a business, from that point, you know, then you start assessing those future plans, the needs, the, the flexibility that you require from your system to facilitate the future state goals of the business. And then last but not least, in terms of looking for a system, you have to also look inwards and assess your own ability to champion this. If you simply lean on a good partner, but don't have any internal governance or quarterbacking behind how this is going to flow from line of business to line of business, how we're going to keep this on track, then you run into huge risk factors of, of simply not being able to keep things going at the rate they should. This is just a very quick visual here to back up that point around uh, picking the right partner. And of course, you know, if anyone wishes, this is a, this is a guide that we'll be happy to have sent out to anyone that requires it. Um, and I'll leave my contact information at the end here as well. So please feel free to reach out. I'll be more than happy to send this over to you. But I, I like this for one point and, and one point only, really. It's on the first run round of evaluating a system. The price is the most important thing. The second time around, it's the level of support provided by the partner. So with that in mind, for anyone who may come away from today wanting to you know, start the evaluative process, please take, take some time to think or whatever it may be. Um, 
you want to start assessing your, your budget, your internal selection team, the timeline of, of when you would like to start and finish and go live, and then begin to set up your evaluative process. So if anyone, again, if you would like to have a guide, let me know. Uh, my name is Alexander Bonavagnex, um, and you can find me on, on LinkedIn, um, uh, as well as uh, uh, please feel free to reach out to me via email. Oh, I see we've got a question here. So <laughs> what should I expect to pay for a tier three solution? So we're looking in that small to medium enterprise space, your NetSuite, your Microsoft Business Central, your SAP Business One. Now, this, <laughs> I like to say it's as long as a piece of string. A ballpark estimate that I, I would be happy to stand behind, generally when you're looking at the actual implementation services of this. Now, bear in mind, I am in Canada. I hope all of you folks are as well. If you've got anyone on the other side of the border, then you're looking at around sort of the, the, the $100,000 mark for an implementation. And your licensing is really dependent on the amount of users that you would have in system. So... It really depends if you're looking to go a subscription route, a perpetual ownership route that you can do with some systems, such as the, the SAP ones, then these, these are all factors that, that play into play into this. But I would earmark as an organization, you're looking at sort of the 150 to, to 200 to be really safe. And with that, folks, you know, thank you so much for joining. I hope that answered the, uh, the question and that you folks found this, uh, this valuable. Uh, please feel free to reach out. It's been an absolute pleasure. And, uh, and thank you very much for your attention. Take care now. Bye-bye.